Does that make sense? Because sitting around hoping is not a strategy and you wouldn't be here if that was your mindset. So I really honor you for being here. You're extraordinary people and I don't say that lightly. I feel like we're brothers and sisters here. So I know what we can do because we did this. We decided to do this back in July because everybody's there and I thought, how can I help? Well, we're going to go online and do it. So we did it here. You're in my little basement here. But after we did this, I, my brain started going. It's like, I, I don't want to do things like this. I want to make this like a live event. I'm used to having 12, 15, 20,000 people in a stadium and rock and roll music and people going for 12, 14 hours a day out of their mind. And I was like, I can never do that in people's homes. But we did this, even the short format, I got ideas. And I was like, okay, I just need to bring some technology to this. I need to change it. So we can show you, we built this incredible stadium. The only reason we're not there right now is I just upgraded it. So. I'm literally back in my basement while they build it for my next event. But we literally have 20 foot high ceilings, you know, 50 feet wide, 180 degrees around me on both sides. And I can see everybody clearly and bring you close and have the conversations with you. And people have an app where they can click on. Some of you have it. I know it's from the Zoom people. That's where you're hearing some of the clapping and laughter. You push that button, it sends a signal here and makes the sound. So we have interactivity. And now we've done more events. I've had people literally that have wanted to do a seminar with me forever that haven't been able to that now can do it from the privilege of the home. They have to leave their children. They don't have to drive to fly to another country. They don't have to play for a hotel. And so now, out of this horrible experience of COVID, not all my companies are perfect. They're all growing. We're all figuring solutions. But the mission that I'm in, I'm able to do and serve. So I just want you to know, this week is for you. And we're going to do whatever it takes. And I'm going to go about two hours to two and a half hours a day. I sit an hour and a half. I rarely do that. You have to understand, I normally don't go less than 50 hours. And I'm not here to do the minimum for you. So you can stick around, I hope, for all of it. And those of you on Zoom, of course, afterwards, I'm going to do one-on-one Q&A with you as well. So we'll go a little bit later for that as well. But I want you to know this week can be a creator of momentum. Like momentum, it's like it takes more energy to get out of the Earth's atmosphere with a rocket. Then once they're out of the atmosphere, it takes one one hundredth that energy to get out of the solar system. Like you see a sports team and they get momentum and they start to dominate. If you learn how to change momentum, you can change anything. So let's start with what are we going to start with? Energy. Energy is the single most important thing. How many of you out there have your own business? Raise your hand if you own your own business so I can get a sense. Wow. Wow. So in the group that I can see so far, it's around 85, 90%. That's usually who is. How many of you who don't own a business are in a place of leadership? You either manage people or your mom or a dad. You have to manage or interact with people and influence them. Say I. Awesome. So if you're in those positions, the way you lead is with your emotional state. Like if, if there's a problem and people are freaking out and you just come and go, move, I'll handle it. It's not ego. You just feel that certainty. People are like, wow, that's somebody I want to deal with. But if you go, I don't know, what do you think? What should we do? Oh, shoot. I don't know. What do you think? Right? You can't have the certainty that gets you to follow through and get results. You aren't going to get that with low energy. So jot this down if you would. You cannot manage what you do not measure. You cannot manage what you do not measure. Now, the number one thing we have to measure is our level of energy, because it's going to affect the way your brain functions, the way you interact with other human beings, whether a problem knocks you to your knees, or whether you truly step up. So that energy is critical. Now think about this. On a zero to 10, if your energy is a 10, it's that zero to 10, like unstoppable energy. It literally, anybody give you anything and you're going to pour through it. You're going to find a way. If your energy is like a five, eh, if it's a two or three, it's over. Sonia, self-discipline is essential in your life and in my life if we're going to get things done. If you get up and you just have no discipline whatsoever, you get no value of anything. Your diets don't work when you don't do them. Exercise doesn't work when you don't do them. But most of the people have some experiences that they want to shift. And once you shift those things, your whole life changes. But life is constant growth. My life isn't here because I went to one seminar one time and now my life is fit for life. I, I work out, I train my mind, I train my body. It becomes a lifestyle. You hear about you know, Richard Branson and Steve Jobs and Zuckerberg and they're no different than you are. 70 something percent of the world's billionaires are something. So you can achieve this. Now, it's not going to be easy. You don't just wake up on Tuesday and become rich on Wednesday. But it doesn't take any more effort than going to a job that you hate. 
So you don't think you can? You don't think you can do it? Think again. No, you can. If you haven't done it, keep striving. Keep working. Don't let up. Things don't come easy. You gotta find it, whatever it is, within yourself. Don't quit. Don't quit. Don't quit. So, just because you fail, doesn't mean you're a failure, all right? So, I just need you to do me a huge, huge favor, and I just need you to keep going, try to make that one different decision that you've not made before. And then my last one is don't let the distractions distract you. <laughs> I know, real simple. But don't let the distractions distract you. If you're having one of those dark days, It's okay. It's okay. It's okay to feel that darkness. If I start crying, I don't think I'll ever stop! You're going through a divorce right now, if you're going through financial problem right now, you're going through an illness right now, you are going through any form of crisis right now. I know you might be, you, you might not even want to get out of bed in the morning. It might be that bad. Please remember this, crisis comes to serve the person who wants to use it as fuel. You have a choice. You can be a victim and you can let it break you, or you can actually ask yourself, how can I use this time in darkness which will not last because you know this dark times never last. The real question is how can I leverage the pain? How can I leverage the darkness? How can I leverage the heartbreak? Use your pain as an instrument for your greatest growth. So. Embrace. Embrace that darkness. And in those moments then, when you can actually just embrace it and accept it, five years from now and 10 years from now, when you look back on it, you'll see it as a pivotal moment in your development. Own it. Don't look away from it. Don't bury it in booze or in pills. Live your life. Embrace your life. With with physical activity and with nature and with jujitsu and with sun and with laughter and guitar and good memories and creativity and discipline. Discipline yourself so you can free yourself. You move forward into the future. There's two types of people. People that are going to get what they want and the life they want, and people that don't. Two types of people, folks. People that get the life they want, and everybody else. A lot of people out there that are constantly trying to improve themselves by looking for the one change. The one change, right? The one change in their life that's gonna make their dreams come true. It isn't one thing. And it isn't 10 things, and it isn't 100 things. It isn't a quick path, and there are no shortcuts. Getting better isn't a hack, or a trick, or a one change that you need to make. Getting better is a campaign. It's a campaign. It's a daily, a weekly, it's an hourly fight. An incessant fight that doesn't stop against weakness and against temptation and against laziness. It's a campaign of discipline. It's a campaign of hard work and dedication. It's waking up early and going to bed late and grinding out every second in between. Every single day.